Hi, I'm Father Thaddeus Langton with the 90 Days for the Souls in Purgatory. Today is day 79. Today we pray for those who neglected the means for continued conversion. We turn to 1435. Conversion is accomplished in daily life by gestures of reconciliation, concern for the poor, the exercise and defense of justice and right, by the admission of faults to one's brethren, fraternal correction, revision of life, examination of conscience, spiritual direction, acceptance of suffering, endurance of persecution for the sake of righteousness. Taking up one's cross each day and following Jesus is the surest way of penance. Whew, there are a lot of means that the Catechism lists here, and so there's no excuse that we don't have an opportunity to be able to practice continued conversion. Part of living our baptism fully is combating not only our sins, but the vices and the roots of those sins, which means that we need to employ various of these means each and every day. And as the Catechism makes clear, the fundamental penance that brings us to conversion each day is that of carrying our cross. As we follow Jesus, because it's not only about suffering or enduring pain, it's about carrying the cross so that we can continue to follow him. But here we see, as I said, the panoply. There's concern for the poor, gestures of reconciliation, defense of justice and right. But I want to highlight especially a few here. The admission of faults to one's brethren. As Catholics, we're often most accustomed to the idea of confessing one's sins to a priest, and that's certainly appropriate and good. We just had a previous episode about those who fail to go to confession. But we also need to accustom ourselves to confessing our sins to others, admitting our faults when we are at fault, and not just blaming others, even if there are two parties involved, and sometimes both people have some measure of fault in an argument, for instance, but owning up to our part of it. And that's not always easy, but it is the path of continued conversion, of humble admission that I need to grow here. And as we admit, we find healing and we find grace from the Lord. Also, fraternal correction, which means gently leading another person to see their faults. It's not angrily pointing at them and condemning them to their face, as much as a much more involved process of helping them in their process of conversion, which isn't always comfortable because we know it's never fun being told our faults. It's not always an easy experience when we're corrected, but oh, do we need it because when other people see us, they often see things we don't see for ourselves. And even if in our pride we don't want to receive such correction, we truly could use it at times for our spiritual growth and continued conversion. And lastly, spiritual direction. That is a practice that is more and more common in the church, and thanks be to God, because the only way that we get to heaven is in and through the church that is accompanied by others And a spiritual director can be a good guidepost to whom we open up our hearts and from whom we receive direction and light for our particular path of conversion because the ways I need to grow may be different than the ways other people need to grow. And that's where the spiritual director helps to tailor the demands of the gospel to my heart, my history, and my personal needs. So join with me today to pray a Divine Mercy Chaplet or Chaplet of the Ten Virtues for those who neglected the means for continued conversion. May the Virgin Mary's Immaculate Conception be our salvation and our protection. Saint Stanislaus Papczynski, pray for us and for the souls in purgatory.